Rejoice, Jerusalem, and all who love her. Be joyful, all who were in mourning. Exalt and be satisfied at her consoling grasp. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. My brothers and sisters, here we come in this vast cathedral to be united spiritually during the celebration of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Though not physically present with each other, the Lord will draw us spiritually close. Today we hear that Jesus wants to heal us, and so we open ourselves to his healing power to the mercy that he extends to us. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess, I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God, God and, and to you, you my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that, that I have, have greatly sinned in, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, Therefore, I, I ask the Blessed Mary, Mary ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and, and you, you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your heart with oil and be on your way. I am sending you just as a Bethlehem. For I have heard from my king from among his sons. As Jesse, his son, came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance, or from his lovely stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees, as God sees. Because the man sees the appearance, but the Lord sees the heart. In the same way, Justice presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, well, The Lord has not known from any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the young one who is tending the sheep. But Samuel will come to Jesse, send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse said, had the young man brought him. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, there, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, 
anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The, the Lord, Lord is my, my shepherd, shepherd, there is, is nothing, nothing I, I shall, shall want. want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The, the Lord is my, is my shepherd. shepherd. There is, is nothing I shall, I shall want. want. He guides me in. I fear no evil, for you are at my side. With your rod and your staff that give me courage. The, the Lord, Lord is my, my shepherd. shepherd. There, there is nothing, nothing I, I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The, the Lord, Lord is my shepherd, my shepherd. There, there is, is nothing, nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me, all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The, the Lord, Lord is my shepherd. shepherd. There, there is, is nothing, nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruit fruitless works of darkness, Rather, expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Glory to you, O Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, O Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Glory to you, O Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. 
As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. So they replied to him, How were your eyes open? He replied, The man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes, and told me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and now I can see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked him, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, he is of age, question him. So a second time, they called the man who had been blind and said to him, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, if he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind, and now I see. So they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, You are that man's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, This is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of 
that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and you are trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him. The one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord. And he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see might see, and that those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not also blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saying, We see, so your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. The last time that we had a live broadcast from this cathedral was on February 11th, just a few short weeks ago. It was on that occasion that this cathedral was so full with people that the only way to participate if you weren't able to get into the cathedral was to be able to do so remotely. During the following weeks, I was often struck when I went to parishes, particularly when I visited some of our school children. They would come up and say, I saw you on TV. I know you, we saw you at the Mass when you were ordained and installed as the bishop. Of course, my brothers and sisters, today we find ourselves relying on this technology for the opposite reason, not because this cathedral is so full that we need to broadcast it further out, but because during these times, we're all being joined together in a more remote way. The Lord is here with us. Jesus loves us. He wants to heal us. And in a similar way that those school children came up to me and said, we saw you, we watched, we followed everything. So to today for so many countless more, this is how we are joining together in the experience of the holy sacrifice of the mass. And we do so in the context of some beautiful re readings that make it clear that Jesus wants to heal us. And this season of Lent, this particular circumstance in which we find ourselves is the best time to respond to that love. There is no better time than now. And so today we'll reflect on the deeper meaning of Lent in the season that we find ourselves of social distancing to understand how we are still spiritually close, fed by the word of God and nourished by his love for us. It was a few years ago that I had the opportunity to make a trip to Dubrovnik, which is a port city on the Adriatic. Now, what's interesting is when I went there, they pointed out the ancient pharmacy area, but they also began to talk about the area that they would have the quarantine, the area where they would separate people from the rest of the community. In reflecting on this, in discussion with the tour guide, we began to reflect on what the quarantine was. Now, what does quarantine literally mean? Where, where does that come from? Here's where it comes from. Quaranta, which is the word for 40. Because in those days, the quarantine itself was for 40 days. In those days, that terminology in their own language, and that has been absorbed into many of the other languages other than English, the word quarantine is from Quaranta, 40 days. And in so many other countries, for example, in Italy, they would refer to this time of Lent as Quaresima, 40. We find ourselves in a time of self-quarantine. We find ourselves in a time of self-sheltering. 
We find ourselves in a time in which the normal human interactions that we've come to rely upon, suddenly it's as if, and indeed it is, imposed from without, that we are collectively experiencing this quaresima, this Lent, this quarantine, these 40 days of Lent with a renewed spiritual intensity. One way to think about it is that we came to the Lord with many Lenten plans. We had our ideas as to how this Lent would unfold, and suddenly the Lord has asked us to give up so many more things than we ever had on our list to turn over to him. And yet the Lord can take this time. He can use this time of social distancing to allow us to grow spiritually close to each other. We see a template for how the Lord wants to bring healing in the gospel passage today with the man born blind, a, a beautiful and extraordinary passage. And it shows us a template of not just physical healing, but of spiritual healing that all of us can avail ourselves of right now. So the man is born blind. And so one of the questions is, you know, why is this? There would have been a thought in the ancient days that this sort of a, a malady, this disability, this different ability as it were, is because of the sin of either him or his parents. And Jesus breaks through that and certainly says, no, that's not the case. And so however we find ourselves in the circumstances we're in today, we can take solace and comfort in this passage that God has a deeper plan, one that is not fully revealed to us at this time. Here's what Jesus says will come out of the blindness, what will happen because of this. He tells us, it is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. This means that the blindness, which certainly no one would ever ask for, the blindness, which certainly was a limitation, the blindness that certainly was something that he suffered from from all those years, for all those years, would somehow be a source of God moving among us. Now, it's premature to draw any definitive conclusions about where things are heading as we deal with the coronavirus. There are some who are experiencing this in an immediate way, directly, suffering, experiencing the effects of this virus. There are others who are first responders, healthcare officials, people who are keeping essential businesses open and functioning so that we can care for the wider needs of the community, and so that we can reach out to those who are suffering. And then there's another category of the rest of us who are called to respond in charity during this time for the common good to suppress the spread of this virus. And so we might find ourselves in a different position than those who are directly dealing with this or those who are responding in a very hands-on, almost literally hands-on way our healthcare workers, and those attending to those needs. And for all of us, the Lord can use this time to reveal his power. Having had the opportunity to speak with one who was already afflicted with this virus, who is suffering from the symptoms, and everyone's symptomology is different and unique, it is certainly as if for those who are already in a quarantine period, this is a time yes, of social separation, but also a time in which they use it as an opportunity to unite their suffering with the suffering of Christ on the cross and to find that time of separation to be a time that they can entrust themselves more deeply to the Lord. We pray for those who are suffering. God does not abandon us in our need. And we know that his love continues to be poured out and so we pray for those who are so afflicted. And we also pray for those who are in the midst of responding in a more direct way, that they will be protected and that God will show his glory through them. And then we pray for the rest of the community as we find all of our social patterns displaced. What we know is that God can reveal his healing gradually and in different ways. How did it happen today? What we know is that as the man born blind approached Jesus, this was not an instantaneous healing. This was not an immediate healing. What did Jesus do? For reasons known only unto God, he 
made some clay, put it on the man's eyes, then the man went and washed. It was a progressive encounter with Jesus that led to the restoration of sight. A couple of weeks ago in our readings, we heard about Naaman, who sought a healing of his own leprosy, and when he came to the prophet, he was told to bathe in a river that was one that he thought was unworthy of him. It was as if he would rather define the terms of his healing than receive the healing that was intended. He had his ideas about how he would be healed. Now, I have to tell you right now, I've got my own prayers before the Lord, as we all do. Lord, bring healing and bring it now. Do I know that Jesus hears those prayers? Absolutely. Do I know how those prayers will be answered? I don't. But here's what happened as the man was healed. First of all, he was asked, who did this? Who is the one who did this? And his first answer was just the man called Jesus. He knew that Jesus had a name. The man called Jesus. Now, Jesus himself was, of course, a known public figure at the time, and yet anybody could call him Jesus. Even in today's world, people know who Jesus is, even if they haven't had a personal encounter with him. And so not only the physical healing, but the spiritual healing of this man developed over time as he first identified him as the man named Jesus. Then he gets a deeper insight, and they ask him to say who it was again, and he says, he is a prophet. And so what happens is that there is this revelation of a deeper identity that Jesus has. He didn't just do this action, but because of the holiness that this revealed, his eyes were opened a little bit more, and he saw him as a prophet. In our old world today, we can certainly see some people who would identify Jesus as a historical figure, and they might go so far as to say he had good things to say. He had good words, and so in that way, he was a prophet bringing words that we should all listen to. But ultimately, the, the final and more definitive healing that the man received is in his encounter with Jesus after he was interrogated by the others. And Jesus has this conversation with him, reveals his identity as the Son of Man, asks him if he believes, and the man born blind says, I do believe, Lord, and worshiped him. During these days, when so many things that we rely upon have been taken away, when we had our list of things that we were telling Jesus we were going to give up for Lent, suddenly the Lord is calling us to respond to him anew. Rather than draw away, rather than pull back, we, we draw forward. And we say, Jesus, I don't know why I'm blind right now. I don't know why we're suffering right now. But I do know that you love me and that you want to heal me. And so during the season of Lent, we should open our hearts and our minds for the healing that Jesus does want to give us. We call upon Our Lady of Lords for the physical healing of those who suffer. That's the feast day on which I was consecrated your bishop, February 11th. We entrust to those who are responding that they would be protected during the season. And we pray that those of us who are separated and establishing new patterns as we find ourselves more physically remote from other people will see somehow the ability to respond to God. A lot of things that we used to rely upon, a lot of those areas that we just took for granted, the, the distractions, the things that clutter up our lives, suddenly they're gone. Some of these are really passing things. I'm, I'm a big NCAA basketball fan. I like March Madness. I miss it. But you know what? My life is going to be okay without it. And in the time that I otherwise might have spent trying to track all the latest scores and games, I'm trying to fill that up in new ways, spending even more time quietly with the Lord and seeking ways to reach out. Do we see signs of hope right now? Absolutely. Do we see signs of healing already? Of course. I'll give you just a few examples. What can happen when we have deprivation is that the Lord can pull out of us love that we never knew we had. I know a family 
their hearts were heavy because their son was away internationally and they didn't know when and how he would be able to get back. And so as the circumstances looked more bleak and the uncertainty continued to percolate and it was literally down to the last minute as to whether or not there would be the opportunity for him to come back and be safe at home, the Lord heard and answered that prayer. Now I'll tell you that the prayer of any parent, the prayer of any family member whose heart is heavy with a loved one, it pulls love out of you that you didn't know you had. And it makes you realize and appreciate all the blessings that you have right now. And so when their son came home and they embraced him, the tears and the love that were shed were beautiful. That's what's happening to some of our brothers and sisters. But we don't need to wait for that to happen in our lives to begin to express right now a renewed appreciation and love for others. I know an individual whose response to this time is, to find other ways to reach out to people, someone who hadn't spoken to someone in 10 years. And it was at this time that he chose to reach out to offer a word of encouragement and support just to reconnect. So we can find new ways to reconnect. We can find new ways for the Lord to use us as his healing vessels. The Lord healed the born the man born blind, gradually. Now's the time for us to respond. Now is the time to reach out to the person with whom you have not spoken to in a while. Now is the time to get the phone chains going, to make sure that nobody is left isolated and abandoned. Now is the time out of charity, painful though it may be because we're so used to our routines, to say that for the common good, I have to curtail some of my own behavior that would bring me comfort and satisfaction and security because there's a greater good. Those are little sacrifices compared to the great sacrifices of those who are dealing with this most directly. The Lord has us in the palm of his hands. He hasn't abandoned us. Today, we have an opportunity to receive him more deeply in our hearts my brothers and sisters, I look forward to the day when we are all together receiving the Lord, celebrating in the holy sacrifice of the Mass as one body, physically present with each other. But you know what? Those school kids who told me they knew me before I knew them because they saw it on TV, those people who stayed connected in the midst of physical separation and found themselves strengthened and renewed, we're still one body. We're still one body in Christ. This is a chance for us to shine forth, to show forth the love that Jesus has for us. Open your hearts to his healing. With a healed heart, reach out to those who need our love. Jesus, I trust in you. Our Lady of Lords, Pray for us. I believe in one, one God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us now turn and present our prayers to our loving Father. For the church throughout the world, especially in those places most affected by the COVID-19 virus, that she may be strengthened in hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For elected and appointed officials, that they might govern during these challenging times in wisdom and charity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For the sick, that through the skills of doctors, with their health care providers, and the continued love and support of their family and friends, so that they may know healing and hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our prayer. For all those we remember at Mass this day, most especially those for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, may they see the face of God this day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Let's pause for a moment and present all our prayers in the silence of our heart to our loving Father. Lord God, we present these prayers to you with confidence. We do so with this great confidence, for we make these prayers through Christ who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God. God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. 
Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by the mystery of the incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out and without end acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to them saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself, through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last, 
From the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, Our Father who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us peace. Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am, am not worthy that, that you should enter, enter under my roof, but, but only say, say the word, and, and my soul shall be healed. The Lord anointed my eyes, I went, I washed, I saw, and I believed in God.
Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illumine our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before I offer the final blessing, I want to offer a few additional points of practical direction and suggestion going forward. You could say this is the announcement time. Uh, some people are prone to leave, though the church doesn't recommend it by any means, right after communion. So you've just made a spiritual communion and you're at home, so don't leave, okay? We still have a few more things to say. Uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, certainly these days have been extraordinary. I shared with you, shared with you some spiritual perspectives uh, during the homily, but I just want to offer a few additional words of practical suggestion. It's important that we stay connected together, so I want to give you some resources and talk about some ways that we might do that going forward. Uh, so one, first of all, this is just technological, uh, to receive up-to-date information on our response, immediate, go to our website, dcgary.org, dcgary.org, and that will allow you to sign up for Flocknote, which is an instant communication means. You could either sign up your cell phone or you could sign up for your email to receive updates as they come forward. We also have a variety of spiritual resources on our website, things that you can connect to so that you and your family will be able to continue to enter into the season of Lent. So sign up for Flocknote, check out our website. I also uh, want to reflect upon you a little bit more deeply about the way we can pray for each other. Here's one way that we can join together. I'll be asking all the parishes uh, throughout the diocese who have bells and the capacity to do so to ring their bells at the traditional times, if they're not already scheduled for this, of 12 noon and 6 p.m. To ring the bells at 12 noon and 6 p.m. These are the traditional times at which the Angelus prayer was offered. I remember as a child being on the playground and at the school when noontime came and the bell rang, we all paused for a moment, just a brief moment until the bells were through and then we went back to our day. The Angelus is a prayer in which we unite ourselves to Jesus through the Blessed Mother. You can certainly find that prayer on our various website and other resources. But here's some simple prayers that at noon and at six, minimally, that I would ask us to pray together. The first would be these two simple prayers. One, Jesus, I trust in you. The next, Our Lady of Lords, pray for us. Jesus, I trust in you. And Our Lady of Lords, pray for us. Jesus, I trust in you, comes to us from the Divine Mercy uh, Litany and Devotion. Simple words. Our Lady of Lords, pray for us. Um, I was ordained at this very church, your bishop, on the Feast of Our Lady of Lords. Our Lady of Lords is the patroness of the sick, and it's on that date that we celebrate the World Day of the Sick. I, I never could have imagined that we'd be calling upon her in this time with this intensity. And yet she intercedes to Jesus with us for her healing, for healing to come to us from Jesus. So at noon and six, now you could make it a more expanded prayer if you want. You could pray a decade of the rosary, you could pray the rosary, you could pray the memorare. But just to take those moments to just briefly pause and be united in prayer, to pray for those who are suffering from this affliction, to pray for those who are helping them and who need our support during this time, and to pray for all of us during this season for healing, for protection, and for acts of charity and love to expand. I'll also tell you what I really miss right now. I miss being able to celebrate communion and the mass with a large community. This has been the season where I've been going out, visiting all the parishes, being, being welcomed and being given the opportunity to receive that love and to share that love with my new flock, our family here in the Diocese of Gary. So here's what I had been doing and will do again when the time comes. After Mass, either at the social hall, the reception, or as people are departing church, I would not just take a moment to greet them, but I would 
um, ask if there's anything I could pray for. And I would take the moment right then and say, well, let's pray now. And that moment of prayer um, was beautiful. Um, some people immediately found themselves shedding a tear, um, being so grateful, having the opportunity just to have this moment of communion where I would pray for your intentions. So I want to keep doing that, but I got to do it in a new way. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, if you email this address with your prayer intentions, I'll be responding to them. I'll be praying for them. So send them to pray at dcgary.org. Pray at dcgary.org. Pray at dcgary.org. Send an email. Whatever those prayers are, I'll take a moment and pray for them and we'll pray for each other because that's part of my role. Part of our role is to stay spiritually connected. Let's find out from each other what prayer needs there are, what real and physical material needs there are in addition to that. I'm going to take a moment as before I confer the final blessing um, because I can't hear all of your prayer intentions right now. We're just going to take a moment, call those to mind, and then I'll lift them all up before I give the final blessing. I'm, uh, we're in this together. Uh, Jesus loves us. He's got a plan for us. Um, I miss praying in person with you, uh, but we're going to keep the prayers coming. And the Lord's got us in the palm of his hands. Jesus, I trust in you. Our Lady of Lords, pray for us. Yeah. Let's pause for a moment of silence presenting these prayer intentions in the quiet of our heart to the Lord. Lord God, I ask you according to per your perfect will to hear and answer these prayers and those that will be forthcoming. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Bow your head and pray for God's blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death. And bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.